Now you want to allow your player to customize their guns by adding in attachments that reduce their bullet spread, or maybe an attachment that increases the damage or takes longer for the bullet to start having damage fall off. That's a little bit more tricky. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can make a customizable, scalable, configurable solution to modify any properties on your gun or their sub configurations. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who? Me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by helping you make a gun customization system for your game. So how can we make this customization system that will allow us to modify any properties without having a lot of interdependent code? Well, that's where we're going to use a little bit more of an advanced topic in just C Sharp development or not just C Sharp, but development in general called reflection or introspection. What this does is allows us to, without having to know ahead of time what we're going to modify, inspect the different properties of a type and say, hey, I want to modify the damage config damage curve property, which we're going to do by having us define the path to that property. And at runtime, we can say, hey, we're going to apply all these modifiers. This one's looking here. This one's looking here and apply different percentage offsets or whatever to increase the damage or reduce the bullet spread. This allows us to give designers the ability, even in the inspector, to say, hey, this thing is going to do this, that thing's going to do this, without you having to make any code changes once you've set up those base types. And because I know reflection is a topic that's not super popular and common in game dev, we're going to walk through this step by step as we're doing this so you understand exactly what we're doing and why we're doing it that way. Remember that the full project is always on GitHub, link in the description, so you can check whatever you've written along with me against what I wrote and make sure you didn't make any silly mistakes along the way. The other important topic we're gonna to cover in this video is how can we make our scriptable objects not be modified in the editor whenever we click play and start shooting and lose ammo. Right now, you've probably noticed that we handle that in the gun scriptable object by just resetting back to the base values. But what we're gonna do now is copy all the values to new scriptable objects whenever we enter play mode so that way we're not modifying those base configurations. So the editor will behave basically the same as it does on the device. So we don't mess up all of our configurations. If you're not using version control, that can be a disaster. And if you're not using version control, you need to be, it'll save your butt so many times. It's really easy to set up too. I've got a link in the description and a card on the screen on how you can set up Git, GitHub, and or Azure DevOps to host your repository for free. Before we start implementing the modifiers, let's set up our scriptable objects so we don't modify our base configurations at runtime in the editor. On each of the scriptable objects, we're going to add this iClonable interface and implement that. It just defines a public object clone where we'd be expected to return a new copy of this class. Since the gun scriptable object one depends on all these other ones first, let's go ahead and jump into the damage config scriptable object, implement the iClonable interface, implement the public object clone, and create a new instance of a damage config scriptable object. The same pattern is going to be applied to every single one of these, where we'll create a new instance and then we'll copy the values over from this current base configuration to the new copy. For the damage config, since we only have the one field, it's very simple, config.damageCurve equals damage curve and return the new config. As we move on to the shoot config scriptable object, make that implement the iClonable and go down to our public object clone, we will again create the new instance of the shoot config, but there are a lot more properties on this one to worry about. We have probably 10, 12 at least, which isn't so bad, but then on every other scriptable object, we also have several properties. So maybe there's an easier way for us to handle this. If we make a new class called utilities and define a public static void copy values that accepts a type argument, that's this angle bracket T, all that's saying is we don't know or care what the type is that's going to be passed in, but our two arguments are going to be of that type. So we'll accept a base and a copy of that particular type. And here's where we're going to have our first introduction to reflection or introspection. Because it's a generic type being passed in, we don't know in this function right now what type is it going to be. It could be a gun scriptable object. It could be a shoot config scriptable object. It could be anything. But what we want to do is the same regardless of what it is. We want to copy all the values from the base to the copy. So we'll define a type type equals base dot get type, which gives us, well, the type of base. So now we know the actual object type that we're operating on. So if we passed in a shoot config scriptable object, for example, this type would be a representation of the shoot config scriptable object type. What's cool with the types is we can get all the defined fields on the type using introspection. So we can say for each 
field info field in type.getFields that will iterate over all the fields available on the type. And field info gives us some information about that field and also allows us to get the value and set the value, which is very convenient because now we can do field.setValue on the object of copy. And what do we want the value to be? We want it to be what the field value is on the base. So we'll do field.getValue base. This is really powerful because now I don't have to write manually out, copy each and every field for all of these scriptable objects. I can just call copy values and whatever is defined will get copied over for me with one line of code. That's pretty cool. Now back in our shoot config scriptable object, we can just do utilities.copy values, passing in this as the first argument, the base template, and the new config we just created as the copy. That will copy all the values for us and we can just return the config. We're gonna do this exact same process on the rest of the scriptable objects except the gun scriptable object. So we can go to the ammo config scriptable object, make it also implement the iClonable interface, implement that interface so we get the public object clone, create a new instance of the ammo config scriptable object, do utilities.copy values, passing in this and the config as the copy and return the config. Now I'm going to repeat that process for the trail and audio config. Now that all of our subscriptable objects have been cloned, in the gun scriptable object we can actually implement our clone function. We don't want to do a copy just like what we did with all the rest of them because we don't want to copy over the scriptable object values, we want to make clones. So in our public object clone for the gun scriptable object, we're going to do some manual copying of the majority of the fields after we create the instance. So like the impact type, the name, the type, We'll copy all those over, and for our scriptable objects, what we'll do is say config.damageconfig equals damageconfig.clone as whatever type we're going to do. So for each of the configurations that are other scriptable objects, we're going to get a clone of them instead of the base value because we don't want those to be modified either. I'll then copy over the rest of the values. Now all of our scriptable objects can be cloned, which means a while ago, when we spawn in our gun scriptable object, we do a lot of resetting of the state because we were reusing the object and the editor stuff didn't get reset properly. We don't need to do that anymore because we're not gonna be modifying that base scriptable object. Now that we won't mess up our configurations, let's create a new folder in our guns folder called modifiers where we'll put all of our modifier code. In that folder is where we're gonna put all of our scripts. We'll just go to the code. We won't just show me creating a bunch of scripts. The first script that we're gonna make is an I modifier. There's a convention where we use I at the beginning of an interface. So we're gonna make a public interface I modifier, and we're gonna make sure it's in the namespace Llama Academy Guns Modifiers. This interface is only gonna define one function. It's gonna be a public void apply that accepts a gun scriptable object. Our second class is going to be an abstract value modifier that implements that iModifier interface. We're going to also make sure this is in the Lom Academy Guns modifiers namespace. And this abstract value modifier is going to define a public string attribute name and a public T amount. So we're going to accept a generic type here. And we'll make a public abstract void apply because we don't actually know how we want to apply the value in this case. Conceptually, what we want to do here is allow us in either in the inspector or in our code to say what's the attribute name or really the path to the attribute that we want to modify and how much we want to modify it by. So if we want to put something that makes our recoil worse, we would put an amount like 1.2 on a vector three or something like that. And we would pass the attribute name of shoot config slash spread because we need to access the shoot configuration and then the spread property of that shoot configuration. We can't just take the attribute name as spread because we don't know what sub configuration that has. The gun scriptable object doesn't have the property spread. I think once we start implementing the specific modifiers, that's gonna make a little bit more sense. So hold on, we're gonna get there and connect all the dots as we go. Most likely our value modifier, concrete implementations like a damage modifier or a spread modifier, will have to do the same thing to figure out which attribute do I need to modify. Since they all need to do the same thing, let's go ahead and define a protected method so all of them already have access to this code and we don't have to copy paste it into each subclass. That's a protected field type get attribute of type field type and I'm calling it field type here because we have just T which is normally the convention already defined above and this field type may not be the same as the abstract value modifier. 
For example, the damage is a min-max curve, but we'd want to apply a value of a float to that min-max curve. Like we may want to increase the damage by 20%. So that'd be a float value on the abstract value modifier, but the attribute type that we want to get would be a min-max curve. That's going to accept the gun scriptable object. That's the core that we want to work on. And we'll pass out object, the target object that we want to mutate, and out the field info field because we want to be able to set the value on the target object of this particular field. Much like what we just did with the utilities, to set a value, you need both the field info and the target object you want to operate on. And the target object may not be the gun scriptable object. So in here, we're going to find an arbitrary field that is either on the gun scriptable object or one of its sub scriptable objects based on this attribute name where we're defining that you would be able to access sub properties by putting a forward slash. We'll define a string array paths equals attribute name dot split forward slash and a string attribute to be the path indexed by path length minus one. That gives us each of the properties in case maybe we're more than one level deep, we can go as deep as we need to using this reflection. And we're going to eventually find this specific attribute to modify as the last one in this array. So we'll get the type from the gun. We'll set the current object target to be that gun. And we're going to iterate over all of the properties except the last one. So we're going to do for int i equals zero, i less than paths dot length minus one, i incremented by one. Then we're going to get the current field with field info field equals type dot get field at that current path paths indexed by i and we'll check if the field is null if it is that means we've misconfigured something we gave it the wrong path and we need to know about that so we'll do a unity engine debug log error just inform ourselves that that we can't apply this modifier because the attribute name doesn't exist on the gun and we're going to throw a new custom exception the invalid path specified exception passing in the attribute name Let's define that class because we haven't yet. Invalid path specified exception needs to extend the exception class and we'll make a new constructor that accepts the attribute name and it'll just call the root exception constructor saying that the attribute name doesn't exist at the provided path on the provided object. We'll also make sure this is in the Llama Academy Guns modifiers namespace. That's the only thing we need to do, but we're going to catch that exception specifically later. Back in the abstract value modifier, we're going to do else target equals field dot get value of the target because we've accessed a sub object. So our new target's going to be that object. And the type is going to be the new target dot get type. So that'll iteratively go through each of the objects as specified. If we do like shoot config slash spread, we're going to hit this else block. The shoot config is going to be the target and the type of that target is going to be shoot config scriptable object. Outside of that for loop, we're going to get a field info attribute field equal to type dot get field of the attribute. We'll check if that's null. We're going to do the same thing we did above saying that we can't apply the modifier because it doesn't exist on the gun and throw that same exception. If we don't throw that exception, then we're going to set the field to be the attribute field, the target object to be the target and return the value of that field by casting attribute field dot get value on the target to be the field type. Remember that field and target object are out parameters. So we're going to provide whoever calls this function. What's the field? What's the target object? And we're going to return the value. I know if you've never worked with reflection before, it's kind of weird to think about this. So let's do the damage modifier. And I think that's going to kind of clear up some stuff. In the damage modifier, we're going to make it extend the abstract value modifier of float type. And we're going to implement that public override void apply gun scriptable object gun. And because that function we just implemented can throw some exceptions, we're going to put try. And we know a min max curve is what the damage curve is. So we're going to say try min max curve damage curve equals get attribute of type min max curve passing in the gun out object target object out field info field. So we're going to get back the target object in the field as well as the damage curve here. If that doesn't throw an exception, then we're going to get the values. So we can say switch damage curve dot mode because remember the damage curve has four different modes. We have the case of two constants. And if there's two constants, we want to do damage curve dot constant min multiply equal amount damage curve dot constant max multiply equal amount. So if we provide an amount of 1.2, we'd be increasing the damage by 20%. In the case of two curves, we're just going to increase the curve multiplier by the amount. So we're going to say curve multiplier multiply equal amount. Same if the particle system curve mode is curve. And if it's a constant, we're just going to multiply the constant by the amount. 
At the end here, this is why we need those target objects and damage curve and all that kind of stuff. We've multiplied and mutated this min-max curve, but we need to set it back to our target object. So in this case, the target object is the damage config scriptable object. The field is this min-max curve. So we want to say field.setValue on the target object, and we want it to be this mutated damage curve. Now we've created our first modifier that will allow us to arbitrarily modify the damage of any gun by some float amount, so by some multiplier. At the end, we're gonna catch the invalid path exception. The error's already logged, so I don't think we have to actually do anything here. We just don't want it to like break the process of applying modifiers. We'll also make sure that all these modifiers are in the namespace Salam Academy guns modifiers. Now let's make a more generic one. We'll make a vector three modifier that extends the abstract value modifier vector three. So this, as long as the property we specify in the attribute name is a vector three, we can do the exact same thing. We don't need like a very specific one. In our public override void apply, we'll do try again because the get attribute can throw an exception vector three value equals get attribute vector three passing in the gun out a target object and out a field info field we're going to set the value to be a new vector three where we're going to multiply the x y and z's by the amount on the x y and z then we'll again do field that set value on the target object passing in this new value again catching the invalid pass specified exception now we can modify our damage and any arbitrary vector three because we've created those two modifiers let's use these two modifiers let's make something with them so we'll make a new class gun modifier applier on start we're going to make a new damage modifier set the amount to be 1.5 so we're going to give 50 percent damage increase and specify the attribute name to be damage config slash damage curve. Then we'll do damage modifier apply. We need to pass in a gun scriptable object. So we'll add in a reference to the player gun selector gun selector. And by the way, this is in the namespace Lama Academy guns demo. You probably don't want to use exactly this in your game. So the damage modifier dot apply will go gun selector dot active gun. Cool. We can also do like a spread modifier by doing vector three modifier spread modifier equals a new vector three modifier. We'll set the amount to be vector three zero. So we're gonna give ourselves perfect aim. And we're gonna set the attribute name to shoot config slash spread. And then again, just spread modifier dot apply to the gun selector active gun. The last thing before we hop into the Unity editor and start seeing all this in action is in the player gun selector, which is again a demo script. Right now we are spawning the gun directly from the scriptable object. We don't wanna do that anymore. So we're gonna say after we found the right gun, we're gonna do active gun equals gun dot clone as gun scriptable object instead of just setting it to be the gun and then do active gun dot spawn instead of gun dot spawn this way we're using the clone not the original base values whenever we're going to apply these modifiers in the unity editor we'll just attach the gun modifier applier to our player and drag the reference of the player gun selector then we can click play and if i start shooting we'll see i have Perfect aim, awesome. The recoil is not happening. And if I select the M4 ammo config, we'll see that the base scriptable object has not changed, even though I've shot a clip, which is different from how it behaved before. If I select the active scriptable object, we'll see the ammo configuration is changing as we shoot. And we look at the debug inspector for our current damage config, we'll see that the curve multiplier is 1.5. So our damage will be multiplied by 1.5 versus the base one that the base configuration has. That's perfect. You can continue to create new modifiers to support modifying any attribute on any of these configurations that you can then customize by just creating those modifiers and applying them to our gun. The logic of when you should do that is totally up to you in your game. I think this is a good place for us to stop today. We can modify any arbitrary property using the system by just setting up a few base classes. This empowers our designers or ourselves to be able to configure any of these options even in the inspector. Of course, we didn't quite get to the part of setting up the inspector to allow us to like dynamically create and add these. We might do that in a future video. If you got value out of this video and you want to see the next videos in this series, make sure you've liked and subscribed. We're going to cover a lot more cool topics like having explosive rounds, shrapnel rounds, piercing rounds, frost bolts, all kinds of different bullet effects in a new video very soon. We're also going to set up a user interface for a player to come in here and say, hey, for this gun, I want the red dot sight, heavy barrel, whatever, and give them the power to apply these modifiers themselves. And if you want to show your support for this channel and this project, you can go to patreon.com slash academy or just click super thanks or join right here on YouTube. Get your name up here on the screen. Get a shout out at the awesome tier and some other cool perks at the tremendous and the phenomenal tiers. At the awesome tier, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Rulin, Ify Obelis, and Fernando. At the tremendous tier, there's Bruno Bozic. And at the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.